And this session today is about our first hub that's about to complete incubation by the end of the year. Yeah. Allow us to share with you a quick video of the journey of Ready Pakistan. Beth, please. Pakistan is working under the umbrella of Start Network. We support localization and uh, watching uh, today having been into the Ready Pakistan, I can imagine uh, that it's a very um, amazing localized model um, started by Start Network. One of the key issues that was actually discussed was the issue of localization, the trust on actually investing uh, in uh, local agencies, not lowering the standards, uh, but also ensuring that we continue uh, engaging. Since the local actors, they are more closer to the community. Ready Pakistan. Ready Pakistan. Ready Pakistan. Ready Pakistan is already resilient early actions to disaster around the year. This is the name given to the new hub. Um, that's going to be moving to independence by the end of this year. But how does a hub on the cusp of independence look like? And what concretely are the elements that need to be in place before a hub is deemed to become ready to become independent? How do they carry the mission of the Start Network? We are delighted to have with us today an esteemed panelist who will answer those questions and bring us along their journey, as well as give us their insight for the future. I'd like to begin by introducing Mr. Jamshed Farid Sumro. He is the president of Help Pakistan and the chair of the National Steering Committee of, of Ready Pakistan. Jamshed Bai. We are joined as well, of course, by Mr. Muhammad Ahmad, executive director for IDEA, the chairperson of the National Humanitarian Network in Pakistan and also a member trustee of Start Network. Joining the group from the International Council of Voluntary Agencies, Ms. Asma Salim, the Deputy Regional Director, Regional Representative for Asia in the Pacific for ICWA, and also from the UN OCHA, Mr. Gift Chatora, the Deputy Head of Office. Thank you very much, um, Ahmad, Jamshed, Asma, and um, Gift for joining us today um, in this conversation. I'd like to begin by giving everyone a little background or a reminder of what hubs are. So hubs are collectives formed by a majority of local and national NGOs aiming to have access to funding, lead decision-making, and ensure that the needs of affected people and communities are responded to in a proactive and timely manner. Start Network believes that through hubs, we will be able to change the status quo of a centralized humanitarian system helmed by international organizations in delivering support that may not necessarily be contextualized, appropriate, and timely. So my first question would have to be for Ahmad. 
Ahmad, in this journey of Ready Pakistan, how have you kept to the goal of challenging the status quo, especially on issues around funding, local leadership, and accountability to affected communities? Uh, thank you, Joanna. First of uh, all, uh, let me congratulate my colleagues in StartNaker, colleagues uh, on uh, making the Ready Pakistan ready to this uh, extent, uh, and our external colleagues like uh, Asma, Equa, and Ocha for their support, PHFN and NHN as well. So it is a seven years long journey, uh, and it was basically started with start network to have a more balanced community enabled system uh, at the national level that can inspire the regional uh, level system uh, so now uh, we have uh, almost uh, covered this journey and now we are in the establishment phase and in the graduation phase so uh, as you ask about the decision making uh, process. So the model is so that we embedded all the uh, parameter of localization in this, as well as uh, now we are uh, struggling with how to ensure participation revolution. Uh, so on the decision making, I can say we have uh, the structure is designed so that by default, the uh, local actors they have uh, a leading role in this. Uh, like on the in the general assembly, we have more than sixty percent local organization now. Uh, we have twenty two national NG, uh, international NGOs and uh, thirty two inter uh, local and national NGOs. This is the structure of the general assembly that provide a found, solid foundation. Then we have technical working groups. Or there, it is open for all, for members and non-members. So we have uh, decided that national NGOs uh, will, if national NGO will be uh, chairing, so the international NGO will co-chair. And if the international NGO will chair uh, any technical working group, so uh, the same way uh, the local NGO will be with them. And it is open not only for the civil society, but for the academia, for the technical department. So it's all inclusive structure that cover the whole range uh, of stakeholder in Pakistan. Now at the top level, we have National Steering Committee that is a leadership council. So we have 50% local NGOs and we have 50% international NGOs. And apart from that, we have two uh, networks. Indus Consortia is representing 60 CBOs, like the uh, community-based organization, and NHN uh, is uh, covering uh, like 200 national, uh, local and national NGOs as a representative. So this way, and the uh, network is chaired right now by Jamshed Saab, who is also uh, a local actor in, in Pakistan. So that's how the, the, the governance model is so defined that ensure the local leadership. And now we are embedding communities uh, we are working with in the structure. So this is on the leadership. Now on the funding, uh, this may be very much interesting for the audience that this is one of the best model we devised. Like the grand bargain target was 25%. But in the business case, we ensured that 50% of the funding should go to the local actors. But when we analyze uh, from the first in the first year, that uh, that 50% of the funding is going to uh, the big national NGOs. So we decided that to cover the whole range and to give benefit to the small and medium level organization, we put a cap. Uh, on the limitation to one organization. And secondly, we, we decided that tier three organization, if it is national, if it is international, regardless of their national and international stature, but if their sizes are uh, like big, so they have to have a downstream partner and they have to share this 50% of ICR 
in at least 50% of the total budget, not only the HR cost, but the 50% of the total budget to the local NGOs, the small and medium especially. So this way, now in Ready Pakistan, 75% of the funding is going to uh, the uh, national NGOs, especially to the uh, small and medium range organization that is like coming now as a downstream partner with the so in this way, we are ensuring their capacity building to our existing member as well. And the decision making are with the technical working group. The fund allocation is not with the NSC, which is a top tier, but with the technical working groups. So we further delegated the funding allocation decision to the ground level. Uh, so that's how we ensure the localization of like the power is very much delegated to the local level as well as the funding flow. And now uh, we are clubbing with the capacity sharing mechanism inbuilt and from outside sources. So uh, that's how we are op we are operating in Pakistan. Yes, uh, I, I hope I answer your question and if there is any, so I can explain it. Uh, but like, Thank let you very me, much. Uh, yes, uh, Joanna, one sentence more. Yes, please. One sentence more. It was like the internal structure. Now, uh, recently, GIFT will uh, uh, further uh, verify it. That recently, OCHA, as a global, uh, their global office, conducted a study in Pakistan. And they uh, clearly mentioned Ready Pakistan as a pool fund. This is one, this is how now we are uh, influencing the external, the whole system in Pakistan. Ready Pakistan has been given a lead for anticipatory action in Pakistan by NHN, PHF, OCHA, WFP, FAO, uh, German Red Cross, and all other stakeholders who are working in the anticipatory action. So this is one of the best example ever that union agencies collectively and the international NGOs and the red uh, pillar, they have given a lead to Ready Pakistan. So this is one of the biggest milestone we have achieved uh, this year. Thank you. That's fantastic to hear, Ahmad. Thank you for giving us essentially a picture of how the hub of Ready Pakistan is actually addressing those three key areas that um, you ventured um, to, to respond to when you uh, come together um, years back um, to form that hub. But as, I, as, as you were saying, um, I think we need to recognize that this ability of, um, of, of Ready Pakistan in its current status is a result of years and months of long conversations and support. Um, we have to remember that Start Network supported initially five hubs as part of the first cohort, Ready Pakistan as part of it, and then another five uh, which started in 2021, and we're now supporting a total of 10. And we did the support through the provision of guidance, um, technical consultants, and, ex and experts in the hub development journey, followed by seed funding that enables staffing, operation support, and programming uh, support uh, to the hub. All of this support um, intends or intended to build a strong hub that has a clear mission and vision, a well-defined governance structure, which I might have alluded to earlier, a membership system, and the financial and programming sustainability that will enable it to flourish after um, in independence. Our hub in Pakistan took this journey al along with Start Network, and as the video have said, they are ready to take the next step, which is to reach independence by completing the incubation stage. Now, Jamshed, let us know, tell us, how close are you to completing to incubation? What elements are in place for you to be able to say that you're about, what, 80 or 90% um, before reaching independence? Jamshed, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Joanna. And thank you, other colleagues. Uh, Pakistan Hub, uh, as you know, that has achieved a lot of uh, its set uh, uh, milestones for its readiness and uh, the completion of the incubation phase. First of all, uh, the Hub has got its name uh, and uh, identity uh, as the resilient uh, reactions to disasters around the year as Ready Pakistan. And its logo 
and got uh, recognition from all the stakeholders, especially the government uh, and EMAs, EGMAs, EMGs, for its uh, uh, unique work around the anticipatory actions in Pakistan and uh, promoting the agenda of localization. Ready Pakistan is a beautiful uh, joint venture of local, national, and international organizations. Currently, this is the unique uh, uh, platform uh, we are the all international, local, and national organizations are sitting together with, uh, with e equal footings. Ready Pakistan uh, has established a national level secretariat, uh, which is being steered by the National Steering Committee, NSC. And we have also a appropriate team uh, uh, on board uh, to run the business of the hub and uh, engagement with all the members and the other stakeholders in Pakistan. Uh, we have also the arrangement of hub host organization to host the hub till the time the Ready Pakistan got its uh, registration. And IDEA is currently the host of the Ready Pakistan. Uh, you know that Ready Pakistan is the first hub uh, among the five uh, founding hubs under the umbrella of the START network uh, who have extended its membership with the coverage of all the provinces of uh, uh, the country and countries like Pakistan. And uh, uh, we have added up uh, 30 new members after an uh, uh, extensive process of due diligence uh, in the pool of uh, 25 earlier members. And now uh, we are 54 members in Pakistan, mm -hmm. uh, both uh, national, local, and international organizations are the part of the school of 54 uh, member organizations. We have uh, uh, conducted, uh, conducted uh, two annual assemblies at this time uh, with the participation of all members. Uh, for organization uh, development, we have also engaged with the uh, other half of the start network with the peer review initiatives. Uh, currently, uh, the Ready Pakistan is implementing a forecast with disaster risk financing DRF program in Pakistan uh, for three major uh, hazards, uh, uh, major hazards like uh, flood, uh, drought, and heat wave. We have also arrangement of DRF uh, host organization for technical and uh, operational support and concern is currently the host of ERF, ERF in Pakistan. And one project host organization with additional resources, uh, opportunity uh, to support the DRF program. And WSA is currently running our another uh, project, uh, which we have uh, 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 get uh, with our internal uh, 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 efforts. Uh, also, mm -hmm. uh, 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 as far as uh, uh, the completion of the incubation phase is concerned, I would like to share that uh, uh, we have uh, multiple ongoing initiatives which uh, we have set to achieve uh, before the December 2023 for uh, the defense independence of the Ready Pakistan, uh, which are like, uh, we are in process to sign an agreement between the hub and member organizations. We are also at the same time working to sign the agreement of Ready Pakistan as network from Pakistan with the START network platform under the governance approach, you know, that the START is going to be the network of the networks. And uh, we are also, in process for the registration of uh, uh, the Ready Pakistan under the local laws, uh, uh, local laws that in Pakistan we are going in prospect uh, 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 probably. And uh, uh -huh. uh, placing, we are in process for placing the accountability mechanism and procedures yeah. and completing the development of the financial model. Financial model is very important and, and the backbone for yeah. Ready Pakistan, I think. And documenting the governance and the membership uh, protocols uh, and developing the fundraising strategy and the financial model, which uh, we are going to just finish with the support of the uh, start network. We are also at the same time uh, updating the program documents and uh, 
uh, agrees with the protocols, with, with the current uh, app host and project host and DRF host, and also making it a live document for any other organization who may be the host in the future. We are we uh -huh. have also initiated the efforts for the capacity building of the hub members to uh, improve their due uh, their uh, tired due diligence so that if any organization is in tier one, then we will build capacity to so that they can qualify for the next tier two or three. And uh, we are also uh, going to enhance the Delhi Pakistan governance and uh, hub secretary capacity also. And okay, the... Jamshed, Jamshed, that's that's a lot of, of work <laughs> um, done. Um, you know, I think things since 2018, <laughs> but I also note that you have mentioned the other pieces. So you've mentioned um, you have a you know the, the clear vision, of course, so, the governance structure. You've had your membership intake, but the remaining pieces are more on the transition side of things, which includes agreements. Um, accountability mechanisms and um you know that's still an exciting part of of, of the work uh to completion jamshed and, and and thank you for for walking us through those um stages and pieces that need to be worked on just for other people and other members also to have an idea as to the dedication Joanna. the time uh you know needed to to oh, do all of those Joanna. uh work uh jamshed yes yeah Joanna, yeah i think uh, ready pakistan is ready to fly and sky it's ready to fly. And sky mm -hmm. is the limit. <laughs> sky is the way. limit. Ready Pakistan is ready to fly. Thank you, Jamshed, for that. And so at this point, I'd like to ask Aspa, coming from that point of Ready Pakistan being, you know, ready to spread its wings, Asma, you as part of a, a similar network, uh, a, a membership organization as well, um, ICVA, and I know that you have been um, engaging with, with, with our colleagues in, um, you know, at Ready Pakistan. I think my, my question to, um, to you, Asma, is that how do you see um, Ready Pakistan in a wider in the wider humanitarian ecosystem in 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 Pakistan and maybe G Gift would also give his answer to this point later. And how do you see Ikva working with the hub, for example, having you know heard from both Ahmad and Jamshed and the value of collaborating and engaging with external stakeholders? Um, Asma, thank you, Joanna. And before I began, I would like to acknowledge a couple of our, our colleagues coming from uh, Bangladesh and Philippines. I can see Sajid in the audience uh, who is running Bangladesh Start Network, and I can see Philippines as well. Um, from Code NGO, Sandino is also joining us, So and all other colleagues as well. So nice to see you um, virtually today. And thank you so much, um, Ready Pakistan, of course, Ahmad Saab and Joanna for this um, um, invitation. Um, uh, I think for us, like you have seen in the video as well, I already mentioned regarding the localization, it's a perfect model of localization and the way um, the whole menu management, governance and implementation of the grants has been working. I have got a chance and privilege to be a part of that assembly um, a few weeks ago and getting to know from the local organizations, getting to know actually uh, coming from Ahmad Saab and other um, you know, stakeholders, it, it seems like it's going so much um, um, well and has a strong potential to kind of you know expand in other countries as well. For us, in terms of how ICWA see it, um, for us, because we always try to make sure that we do provide chances for a local initiative to be a part of at the regional and global level. And we have this uh, re recent regional humanitarian partnership week, uh, which is coming in December. And we definitely would like Ready Pakistan to be there. And I can see uh, from Amatsa, we already um, accepted the, a proposal from them. By the way, if somebody who doesn't know about this uh, initiative happening at the regional level, it's um, a, a, it's a regional platform where NGOs uh, present their best practices, uh, their recommendations, their excellent projects that they do at the country level, at the regional level, and they present it um, uh, at the Bangkok level. This uh, this initiative is uh, launched with the help of OSHA and a couple of other networks as well. So I think that would be one of the area where we will be supporting uh, Ready Pakistan to make sure that the exchange will happen at the regional level and other countries and other um, uh, donors, also other 
stakeholders because it's going to be a very diverse um, stakeholder engagement as well to uh, to get to know about this initiative and be able to kind of replicate this in other countries as well. From the humanitarian, uh, hum uh, humanitarian financing perspective, um, we already are working on the pool funding as an equa, and I think this is an excellent model for us to kind of you know showcase um, the case studies and highlight how strongly this uh, Ready Pakistan become a very localized model as well and the way it's been running, although it's been run by INGO and local NGO together as a mixed group but i think the potential is there and i think uh, it will be easily replicated in other countries as well um we have this report recently and it really showcased about the pool funding phenomena that how important it is in the current funding scenario how important it is to be a part of um, the humanitarian system as well um i will also put our, our new our latest report in link as well if somebody would like to hear and in terms of the NGOs perspective, we try to make sure that we synthesize and simplify these big, big, uh, you know, jargons and big terminologies as well. So you also see in our website, there are a couple of um, uh, publications we have produced uh, on the uh, pool funding to make sure that NGOs who are not aware of, you know, start network and some similar kind of initiative, they will be able to know about it. And they can reach out, uh, not only directly to us, but also to Ready Pakistan directly to the hub and also to the start network as well to be able to connect it and get to know more about it. Um, and of course, our, uh, our agenda is on localization is very strong, we will make sure that wherever we are uh, possible, we uh, try to um, um, share the good practices um, at the global level as well. And I'm definitely sure there's going to be a chance as well where we can highlight and present these kind of case studies, um, you know, at the Geneva level as well, where usually the policies um, happen to be, you know, make in the making. So yeah, these are a couple of reflection from my side. And uh, yeah, I can see that um, amazing participation uh, and it's a really mixed group from Pakistan and other region as well. Uh, thank you for uh, having me here. Over, Joanna. Thank you. Thanks very much, um, Asma. Uh, an excellent model, a localized model. Um, and um, that's how you describe um, the localization, the, the local led model of, of the hub. You've also touched on pooled funding, but also more importantly, your intent to cooperate and collaborate with them, knowing that you are aiming for a common goal of, of local-led action. Thank you for that reflection, Asma. And at this point, I'd like to hear from GIFT, from the UNOCHA uh, side. Um, GIFT um, has been closely working with our colleagues uh, at Ready Pakistan, and I think GIFT is specifically on the anticipatory action initiative. So my question to you is, how do you see Ready Pakistan furthering the work um, on AA? Because in addition to building their own entity as a hub, there's also a, a very strong uh, need to promote program and demonstrate new ways of working, including anticipation. Uh, so, so Gift, how do you see the role of Ready Pakistan in promoting AA um, in, in the country? Gift, please. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Joanna and uh, colleagues uh, who are also facilitating and co-facilitating this session. Uh, I think some of the issues have already been touched by my colleagues. Uh, in the room, I also have uh, uh, Imran, who is our AA uh, focal point. And then we also have Farida, who has just joined us, uh, also a, as part of uh, uh, OSHA Pakistan team. Uh, now, moving forward to, to the question you have asked about uh, uh, Ready Pakistan. Uh, Ready Pakistan is not new to the issues of uh, 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 disaster risk financing. They've been involved uh, with support from the German government, with support from AA. So I think they have a niche area in that area, in, in, in that regard. So we don't see them as the newcomers when it, when it comes to anticipatory action. And uh, they've been already involved in that. Uh, in a meeting which we held as um, um, a PHF uh, NHN, we agreed for Ready Pakistan to take up that role, knowing that they have the capabilities. They will take up the secretariat role, facilitating the secretariat role, coming up with the terms of reference. Uh, that's one of the key priorities which they need to present to the next HCT, to come up with the terms of reference uh, for for and and subsequently they also need to come up with a, with a clear uh, roadmap. But uh, what we also expect from Ready Pakistan is uh, key, clear messaging 
in terms of anticipatory action so that there's no confusion uh, you know at times we tend to mix uh, disaster risk reduction and climate ad ad adaptation but having a clear messaging in terms of that area but uh, above all there are also areas where they can also learn from the pooled fund mechanisms that OCHA is implementing, whereby the majority of, uh, of the recipients of the pooled fund were actually uh, local NGOs, and because they are more closer uh, to the people. So I think Ready Pakistan can champion all that uh, uh, and make sure that uh, we are not climate proof, but we are uh, ready uh, in terms of uh, mitigating the risks uh, by giving uh, alerts uh, in advance, championing issues of anticipatory in advance, but as OSHA, PHF, and NHN, and collectively as the humanitarian country team here, we are ready to support. Uh, it's not the work of uh, 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 Ready Pakistan alone. We are there. We are there to work together, but we would want to see uh, Ready Pakistan uh, taking this initiative, I think you also saw from the video which uh, which was shared that uh, we talked about localization, uh, ready Pakistan being local, but without compromising the standards. So they've already been doing it. They have a niche area in that. We need just to support. We need to encourage. We need to continue being there together and walk the journey together. We should not see this as an uh, a ready Pakistan uh, issue, but uh, doing it collectively. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Kef, for that very insightful uh, point, uh, especially on you know seeing the value of how the messaging of, of Ready Pakistan in terms of anticipatory action, but also the actual model and the demonstration of how local capacity and local uh, resources and um, actors are really are the best place um, to provide support prior to a disaster. Um, and and I think you you highlighted again, you know, the value of them as a collective formed by years of collaboration and coordination and, and technical support and are now ready to just expand their wings and work closely, not only with, with the UN, but also uh, with ICBA and, and other stakeholders um, in the country. Um, I think I just have one more question with Ahmad before we proceed to some there's a lot of questions on, on the Q&A box uh, for, for everyone in the panel. But I think before we go to that, we have a couple of minutes left. The I think a very important point, um, I think we, we, we've said modeling local leadership is one aspect of, of the hub that ASMA and, and GIFT um, you know, uh, appreciates, um, including advocacy, as well as the, you know, the, the hub carrying your own programs and really demonstrating how um, locally led should be done. But I think a, 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 an important part there is being part of a global network. Being part of a hub family, family is something that all hubs consider a benefit of being in a hub. And how has this supported Ready Pakistan in this journey of mind? Before we go to the questions. Uh, like uh, it provides us a strength to be connected with the start network and uh, it provides us uh, a good strength to be connected with the rest of the hub. So we are a family of hub and uh, now mm -hmm. as you uh, says and you uh, see with Equa and Ocha. So basically the struggle is to have a, a pro people locally led a more balanced humanitarian ecosystem based on the mutual uh, support and assistance uh, for the people, basically. Uh, and uh, this, uh, we have few challenges as well, like how to strengthen Ready Pakistan internally as a governance model, uh, as membership, how to capacitate our members and then how to get connected with the regional and global player to have an influence and to provide them a model for localization. Because for the last seven, eight years, I have been in touch with the Grand Bargain. There were a lot of talks and talks and talks and talks, but no practical model. Here we have a very practical model. We have already piloted it. We have uh, operationalized it for the last few years now. Now I, we are inviting 
the stakeholder to please see this model as well as the donor to please see this model improve help us improve this if there is any gap but we will find one it one of the best model in terms of localization uh yeah. and for uh, uh, uh like uh, that can be replicated in most of the countries uh with uh, some of the modification but the principles are very much embedded uh that is globally committed in global uh, in grand bargain in c4c uh and in, in the rest of the like uh, in the world humanitarian summit uh so we uh, can showcase a very pr practical model and we can help other to have the same or somehow the same model in their countries as well thank you Thank you uh, very much, Mad. And I think apart from just focusing on the model of the program that we're bearing or carrying within the hub, the model actually of, of, of the hub as, as an entity is something that you are also able to demonstrate and, um, you know, share 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 with others we have several questions but um early apologies as we cannot cover all of them i'll start with one um how many donors do you have um ahmad and then i think that could be followed up with how is the funding channel and any challenge that you have in, and when you have a lot of organizations um joining those are three key points ahmad maybe a minute or two for, for that before um we 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 do another one um Ahmad, please. yeah so we have been supported uh start network is basically like this is the baby of the start network so uh we have a support from fcdo Dutch government and the rest through start network and we have a support from uh the g54 through whh so that is the internal funding um uh, we 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 raised uh, and now we are looking for the more. We we have applied for some global calls, small ones, but we are applying and start is helping us. So we are good to have like uh, more than 5 million uh, uh, euro or uh, pound uh, for, for the programming and somehow uh, around through 300,000 uh, for, for, for the secretariat. So it's a good start for any basically now the second is uh how to handle this if the system is transparent if the decision making of the fund allocation is uh by the people who are more localized and with a very open and transparent mechanism so far for the last three four years we the technical working group they are in a, we we uh, uh, conduct contingency planning with the government collectively, NGOs, INGOs, uh, technical department, NDMAs, PDMAs. We ask for the proposal uh, from the organ, uh, uh, member organization. They can have their downstream partner from the non-member organization as well. And then the technical working group finalize uh, the proposal and uh, they have the authority and if the trigger hit, they shift. We have to shift the fund to the organization with the no time, and they have to be operational in seventy two. Uh, that is a very ideal system. Uh, so it is very localized system. Uh, so, so far, so good. Yes, it is very uh, now a lot of member, and we will have more as well. But for that matter, we have worked a lot on our governance system. If the model is good, <clears throat> now we are coming up with the complaint response mechanism and accountability mechanism. So it, we are strengthening it more. So if the system is transparent, open to everyone, um, so far so good and hope so it will go a long way. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for, for those uh, responses, um, Ahmad. And just to let everyone know, we will capture all your comments and uh, send an email to give you a... Is it me or... Okay, she is here. Yeah. 
Oh, she's back. Okay. Joanna? Okay, I, I think before we close, okay. Tony, um, I'm just gonna Proceed. sorry, I'm gonna close. Uh, before before closing, we're gonna ask one question to um to Jamshed. Perhaps I think there was one point around the challenges of moving to independence. Maybe um in in, in a brief answer, Jamshed, could you share with our colleagues and friends what are the main challenges and um, how were we able to overcome them um at, at Ready Pakistan? Jamshed, please. Um, uh, Joanna, I think uh, uh, there are uh, two or three challenges maybe for the independence. Uh, one may be the, uh, after the completion of the incubation, there may be some uh, challenge of resources, as uh, I think uh, most of the support from the start will be ended over. And we have to go with uh, some other uh, sources. And you know that the anticipatory action and forecast based model is uh, a new uh, for the Pakistan and especially the local civil society organizations to understand because this is a trigger model and a, a, a technical model. So I think uh, uh, there is need to further work on uh, the capacity building of the member organizations. Uh, to understand the uh, this model, how this is uh, proactive, and uh, we how we uh, allocate our allocations uh, pre-trigger and before the onset of the emergencies. So I think these may be. Thank you very much, um, Jamshed um, and Ahmad, as well as Asma and Gift for your time and sharing um, the journey of, of Ready Pakistan, as well as uh, the partners, the stakeholders that you're working with um, um, in the country. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Ready Pakistan, all geared up and ready to move to independence, a consolidation of several elements from a collective, uh, forming a collective and coordinate vision steered by passionate leaders and members supported by different agencies and guided by Star Network. So in the next couple of months, you will be seeing them fly, is in Jamshed's words, and make the difference that they have envisioned to achieve in the development of the hub. Thank you, everyone. And uh, we'll get your questions and make sure that we'll respond to all of them via an email or a chat with our members. Thank you very much, um, everyone. Uh, good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank good you. Good morning. Bye. Bye bye. Wow. Oh, she, she is a good moderator. I'm impressed with the Ready Pakistan. They have all the. Thank you, everyone. Bye.